So I've got this Docker registry and uh, it's got an auth server running, you know, Docker registries on port 5,000, auth server on port 5,001. And uh, as, as part of the registry two box from Hack the Box, I have to enumerate these and pull a Docker image out of there and actually look inside the image to get some information I need to move forward. And, you know, you, we'd start off with doing a lot of this manually, grabbing the token from the auth server, using it to auth onto the uh, registry server, uh, and enumerate it and pull, eventually pull an image. Um, but then we, in my blog post for this box, I will show how I can just use the Docker command to do it. And what's interesting is when I run the Docker command, I don't have to tell it, hey, by the way, here's the auth server. It just figures that out and goes and gets it. And so I kind of wanted to figure out how does that work? So today we're going to just dive into that. It's not important to solving the box, but we're just going to look at like, how can we look under the hood? These are all SSL TLS connections. Um, how can we look under the hood and figure out exactly what's going on and see how it's working? So um, Let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, to start, we have uh, web hosting that hacked the HTTP port 5000. That's the Docker registry. In fact, if we do to check out a Docker registry, you'll check out dash v2, and you can see we get unauthorized. Um, very small, but you can trust me if it's too small. Uh, on port 5001, we have an Acme auth server, and uh, that's where we are. So we'll come back here and uh, look in burp. Now I have burp set up so that anything with the dot HDB domain just forwards to burp by default. I don't have to turn it on and off. Um, and I've got a video showing how I set that up. I'll include a link somewhere. Um, but so basically if we come into proxy history, uh, we can see, let's see, here we go. Here's our request to V2 and we get back a 401 unauthorized. The thing that doesn't show on the page here is it's got this dub 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 authenticate bearer uh, realm equals, and that gives us this URL HTTP web hosting 8.htb 5001 slash auth and it gives us a service docker registry um and then here's the unauthorized message so if we can check out let's see i'm here and do slash auth and we get some jwts back and uh that's pretty cool we can grab this um in fact let's just grab so a jwt is three base 64 encoded blobs um separated by periods uh the first is some is metadata the second is the data of what, what your grants are, et cetera. And then the last part's the signature. Uh, so we'll grab this one. We could throw it in JWT.io, but we can, for something this simple, let's just put it here in base 64 minus D. Uh, and of course, we'll use my favorite tool, JQ. See, so we have an IA, we have, you know, this is for the Acme Auth server, um, expiration dates, et cetera, some other stuff. So we've got a JWT here. Um, now, in, in the blog post for this box, I show a lot about figuring out how to actually get the right thing from here. What we actually need to do is uh, question mark uh, service equals docker regi uh, registry. Like that just, and that's matching exactly what comes from here. Uh, and, and when we want to do a poll, we're going to say scope equals repository uh, hosting app. And again, in the blog post, I show how we enumerate all of this to figure it out. Um, but now, let's see if we grab this, we grab this one here. Uh, if we do the same thing, echo into base 64 minus D into JQ dot. Um, now we get a little bit more back. We get this, um, the Docker registry showing up here. We have some access, actual access here. Whereas here we had nothing. Um, now we have access to the hosting app. Um, and so in fact, what I like to do actually here is, uh, let's see, if we do curl uh, and let's, uh, let's, we'll grab just this right here. Copy, put that there. I'm probably gonna need to put that in quotes since it's got some ampersands in it. Um, let's see, oh, I need to do a dash K because it's S SSL and the cert's not trusted, perfect. Um, and now I can do that into JQ minus R, get, uh, well, we'll just do JQ to start uh, dot token. And boom, now we, we get just the token. I'm gonna put an S here, that gets rid of this downloading thing. And I'm going to put a dash R here and that gets, that gets rid of the quotes. So now we have the raw string coming through here. Uh, so now we can do token equals this. And now we can run this command and capture token. And now if we just do echo token, we've got our token. So now we can use that. Um, cool. So what are we trying to do? So we can now do a curl minus K on, uh, grab this right here. Oops. Paste. Paste. Uh, and for now we can do, we know the app is called the, it's called hosting app. And um, we can like do a tags list. Oops, we're gonna get unauthorized. Uh, but if we add in, put it on the front of here so we can make changes more easily. Uh, cookie. Uh, that's not cookie, it's, it's uh, auth 
authorization bearer and then our token like that now we're getting back there. now we're getting back our tags I and mean, there's only one tag at the latest so we can pull the manifest from here so we can say uh manifest and then we put the tag we want to pull and this will give us information about that image and so this is getting much bigger now um and the important parts well there's this is all useful information but when we we're looking at docker and how it works these blob sums represent the different layers of the image um and if you think if you can picture like a docker compose file or a docker file um, where it does certain steps these are the different changes to the image over those various steps um and you'll see in a bit, we'll do, scrolling up here, uh, we'll do a Docker pull and we'll see these various layers getting pulled down. And some of them are repeat, repeat um, but we'll see them get pulled down and assembled. Um, so we've seen how we can pull that information. Um, now, again, we could do this manually. We could pull each of these blob sums. Uh, we could pull and it would give us a tar GZ file where we could decompress and pull out pieces. Um, we could use a tool like Docker Registry Grabber um, or many, several others that will do that for us. Um, or we can use Docker. Um, now, to get Docker working over TLS, I need to have the certificate here um, from this server accepted and trusted in my server. Um, there is no dash K that I know of for Docker. Um, I show in the blog post how to, how to set that up. Um, I've already done it here. I'm not gonna go through it here. If you're interested in that, there's a link to the blog post in the description down here. Um, go check that out. Um, now, what we want to do is we want to do Docker pull, and we can do web hosting dot hack. I think I can uh, hosting dot hack. And actually, I do want to check, so I was just messing with this. We should make sure, excuse me for one second here. Yeah, let's do, make sure we have our IP set up right in our host file. We'll come back to that. I'll explain that in detail in a minute. Um, so we do Docker pull web host, web hosting dot hack the box, port 5000, hosting app latest. And you can see we're starting to pull the various layers here. We're downloading these different layers. These are the ends of the blobs. And uh, we're going to put that together. Now I'm going to kill this because I don't actually want to complete it yet. Um, I want to not have that image on my system yet. I want to be able to pull it again. So the question here is, we immediately started reading that stuff. And I didn't tell it, hey, go talk to port 5001 and get a token. How is it figuring that out? Um, so let's open up Wireshark. And uh, so we'll come down here, go on ton zero. We'll say uh, host. 10, 10, 11, 223. And we will capture, let me close this laptop, uh, capture there. And so now if we come back here and we start pulling again. We can see traffic going through here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and kill this now because it's just downloading. Um, and we can stop recording. And let's take a look at the statistics here. So we can look at the endpoints. And under TCP, we have for the, there's two ports in use by our remote host, uh, 5000 and 5001. So we are hitting port 5001. And how do we know to do that? Um, unfortunately for us, this is all happening under TLS. Um, so if I came here and said, let's do uh, TCP port equals 5001, you know, if this wasn't under TLS, I could do a follow TCP stream and see it. Um, but, you know, it's just encrypted garbage now. Um, we could do follow, I thought, I thought I said follow TLS stream. I don't think that's going to do anything though. Um, yeah, there's nothing nothing useful there. So, um, so we're kind of stuck there. Um, what I want to really be able to do is because I know this is all just making a bunch of HTTP requests. I would love to be able to look at this through Burp. Um, the problem is that I need well, there's no proxy command for Burp, for Docker that I could get working. Um, I can't use proxy chains because uh, Docker I believe is a Go binary and it brings all its own static stuff. So it's not making system calls to Linux and I can't hook them with proxy chains. Um, so we're gonna just set it up kind of in a brute force way. Um, let's take a look real quick. I, uh, if I go into proxy settings and I've got my proxy list, my standard proxy listener on localhost 10, uh, 8080, there's no reason I can't add more. And so to do, let's do that. So we're gonna add, we're gonna bind to the port 5000. And we're gonna do, and we're gonna go over here request handling, and we're gonna say anything that hits five thousand, don't treat it like a normal HTTP proxy, but instead send it to, just forward it right on to to uh, my my remote host, and I'm gonna put it to port five thousand. 
Now I do need to force the use of TLS and I need to tell it this support invisible proxying. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what that means, but I tried both ways. It only works when you check it. So we'll go with that. Um, and then I can add another one for port 5001 and do the same thing. So this we're gonna go 10, 10, boom. And we're gonna go to 5001. We're gonna do the same thing here. And now we've got listeners on 5000, 5001. So we can come back here and do vim fd host. Um, another neat trick about doing it this way is um, I mentioned earlier how I had to install the certificates. Well, if I've already got my burp certificates installed, um, then I don't have to install the remote certificates. I can just let it trust burp and that's kind of cool. Um, so, okay, now we're set up, we got our listeners. Um, sorry, I went kind of quick. So what I've done here is I've gone to my as a host file and said, hey, web hosting.htb, it's my local host, just hit that. And so now when I do a Docker pull, it's gonna hit 5,000 and 5,001 on my host, which happen to be burp listeners that are gonna forward along. So let's try that. Um, let's see, do I have my, I'm going to, for just for making sure it's really clear, we're gonna clear the history and we will start running this. And uh, looks like we got a bunch of stuff here. I'm gonna cancel this. Let's take a look. So first thing we see is our request to the V2 endpoint, the standard Docker thing. And we get back our 401 unauthenticated and we get back our www authenticate bearer. You know, here's where you should go to get the token. And immediately after that, we see a request to um, this. And it, it's got the scope um, that it gets from here. Oh, sorry, it's got the, uh, let's see, it's got the uh, service, sorry that it comes from here where it tells us the service and uh, it's got the scope based on, you know, I told it I want to pull hosting app. Um, and so that's all in here and it comes back here and gets these tokens. And then uh, now we see the authorization bearer header being added to the future requests. And here we go, getting a blob, a um, bunch of stuff coming back. Uh, and this is where we're starting to put together the thing. That's pretty cool. Um, we've managed to pull, open up the, look under the hood and see exactly what's happening. Um, the one last thing I think would be kind of fun to experiment with is um, our theory at this point is that this header right here is what's telling it where to go to get off. And the question is, is that right? Can we test that? And so to test that, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back and say, let's add one more. And we'll, board, we'll add to bind to port 9999. And if we get that, we will redirect to host. Um, we don't even need it to work, right? We just need it. To, we can go to... Um, now let's make it work. 11, 223. Uh, and we'll send that to port 5001. We want it to go to the office server, right? So we use TLS and invisible proxying. We hit OK. And so now in theory, what we can do, it, well, let's see. So we're going to go here and turn intercept. On, and we're going to do a pull again. So what we got here is we have our quest of V2. Um, we want to, let's go into settings, uh, intercept, just go for all. Intercept all responses. So now we're getting responses as well. And so if we forward this, here comes back the response, the 401 unauthorized, and we have this. So what happens if we change this to 9999 and we forward? Now the next request coming in, um, oh, interesting, it's requesting, I wonder if we have some sort of residual um, request here because it's requesting it again. Let's, we timed out for that. Um, here's our unauthorized, let's drop. Um, we might've timed out there. Let's try, let's try this again. In fact, I'm going to do just just to be super sure. Service, service, Docker restart. Just so it's clear things. Sudo and uh, let's run this again now. Okay, we got an intercept on. We are going to forward that. We're going to change more quickly this time. Our, there, and boom! Right here, we have our request. Now it's being sent to uh, the remote server on five thousand one. But you can tell here, it's actually trying, it tried to reach out to webhosting.htb 9999. And it just so happens that Burp intercepts that and says, oh, well, you told me to send that to 5001 here, and that's what I'm going to try to do. So it does that, and boom, back comes the result. So um, nothing groundbreaking here, right? All we've, all we've done is shown it does what we might have guessed it does. Um, but hopefully, you know, the ability to say, oh, can I set these Burp proxies? Can I look at it in Wireshark? Um, I don't know, it's interesting. Just be curious. Um, I've always been telling people, you know, if you've got a question, see if you can figure out how to prove it. Um, make hypotheses and try to prove them. It's a scientific method. So um, with that, I'm going to call it here today. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll talk to you next time.